Hi, um, I'm Brandon. I work on the Google Open Source Security team, and naturally, uh, part of that is securing open source, and naturally, part of that is supply chain security. Right. So let's talk about what everyone's been talking about. Over here, we see the supply chain security bingo card. Um, so software supply chain security, something everyone's been talking about. We've seen the charts. So it's going up. The arrows are always going up. Um, and you know, these, this is important, right? Indeed, um, software supply chain compromises and attacks have been on the rise of late, right? However, the industry also has gotten together and given a response to match. We've seen a lot more efforts, a lot more working groups, a lot more foundations and organizations prioritizing supply chain security. In fact, even at Cloud Native Security Con this time, we've seen a very large number, the most number of submissions coming around the topic of supply chain security. So as a community, we have something to show for that. So let's just look at the, all the cool new and existing projects that uh, have been trying to solve this supply chain security problem. Uh, this goes across many different areas, including build systems, um, as you've heard already in today's keynotes, signing trusts, uh, software metadata, and scanners. Right? So, there's a whole lot going on here. I'm going to spend a little bit kind of talking a little bit about what the layers are and you know, what's going on, the progress we are making, and then talk a little bit more about what are the next steps, where should we go. Uh, so to start in this list, we have projects that help set a strong foundation of trust. Uh, you've heard it a ton of times, six star, and um, kind of underpinning that uh, tough or the update framework. Uh, they help keep uh, signing simple and open. And in addition, we also have zero trust projects like Spiffy Inspire and Keylime that are integrating with the entire ecosystem as well. We've also seen a lot of activity in progress in terms of software metadata. Standards such as Salsa, they're working on their 1.0 release uh, that will have a drop in a couple weeks and hopefully GA in the next one or two months. And if you're in the US and you've heard about the executive order, which um, I think most <laughs> already have and are affected by S-bombs, uh, we see both SPDX and Cyclone DX standards as well um, becoming more popular. And on top of that, incoming tooling, which is very important. Um, and we see things like vulnerability exploitability exchange that is coming out of the CSA working groups to kind of tackle, you know, now that I know what my vulnerabilities are with all my scanners, um, how do I triage them? What, are, what is important to me, what is not? Maybe some vulnerabilities I am not affected by. Um, and finally, of course, we have built systems like Tekton and the OpenSSF Fresca uh, who have helped to be able to create these trusted artifacts. So seeing all this great tooling being done, Tag Security had an effort um, last year around creating a secure software factory. And so what we've done is we've created a reference architecture to show you how you can take these different components and put them to a, co to a cohesive structure to produce trusted software and attestations. However, one thing you notice about these projects that we just looked at is a lot of them are focusing on the producing side. How do I produce trusted software? How do I produce uh, software metadata that is useful? You know, how do I get S-bombs? Right? That's the number one question that everyone's talking about. Um, but as with any supply chain, right, there is producers that are consumers as well. And so we've done a great job producing trust. Uh, there's many, however, there are still many open questions about what do we do with this, right? Um, we have all these documents, how do you evaluate them? We have questions like, okay, I have an S-bomb, what do I do with it? Um, how many levels deep do I have to check for things? You know, how many levels deep of salsa do I have to check transitive salsa? Or even so, within each uh, software metadata document, which of the fields are important and which can I just safely ignore? So today we are faced with an overwhelming amount of software supply chain metadata, right? Um, and, and we somehow need to find meaning out of it and 
kind of like I feel like this this picture kind of expresses how I look when I see like a 300 megabyte S bomb. Uh, I there's basically uh, not much that that you can make meaning out of it besides trying to grab through a few things. Um, so then, how do we address this consumption story? How do we make sense of all this software and metadata? Um, so to recap, today we've established a strong trust foundation, a decentralized, flexible anchor of uh, trust fabric. And then we have a layer on top of that, which is attestations of metadata consisting of scheme, schemas and sources for rich security metadata. So now we need to build on top of that. We need to talk about the consumption story, and here's the framework to think about it. We have to add the layers uh, in green here, aggregation and synthesis, as well as policy insight to be able to convert them to actionable items. Um, so let's talk about what exactly are these layers. So let's talk about aggregation and synthesis. And um, in a nutshell, this is about uh, bringing all the metadata together and performing intelligent linking between them, right? So best way to illustrate this may be through an example. Let's say you have a homegrown application like an Acme application, right? So first thing you need to do to reason about security is first you need to know about who built this application internally, where was it built, so you have to pull data from internal teams, internal systems, build systems, source repositories. You need to get, get all that information in. And as we all know, you're probably using open source libraries in that. And therefore, the next question is like, how do I get information about open source um, um, libraries and software that I'm using? And therefore, we had to pull information for package repositories from the various ecosystems like PyPI, RubyGems, Maven Central if you're using Java. And on top of that, if you're using vendor libraries and software, you will have to pull that in and get them from your vendor as well. And last but not this, uh, least is threat intelligence, right? Given all this metadata I have, how do I know what's important? What do I have to check for? What affects my security posture? And so this includes things like CVEs, right? That's the, the one that we are most um, commonly familiar with. But now we have VEX, and in addition to that, you know, we want to kind of think a little bit further in terms of now um, I need to think about developers and actors of who's producing what in the software supply chain. But collecting all these S-bombs and files and putting them in a single directory doesn't really do much, right? We're just ending up with um, files um, um, in the same directory, and maybe if you're like really good with prep, you can do a lot of great things with it. Um, but I think the question here is, you know, we need to be able to link them intelligently and be able to perform queries over them. For example, if I give you a SPDX, a Cyclone DX, and a Salsa file, right? How do I make a query across them? How do I be able to reason um, how this particular component in my S bomb relates to this Salsa document that has told me how it was securely built? So examples of um, projects that do aggregation and synthesis today. Um, we have the graph for understanding artifact composition that we're working on together with a couple other organizations like uh, Kusari, Purdue, and Citi. Um, and the idea here is to be able to be able to take these data sources and to be able to link them intelligently um, so you can query them as a graph. Um, and of course, we have public data source aggregators like Depths of Dev and Repology that give you information about uh, open source libraries, their security, as well as licensing. And of course, you know, we have package managers that have been you know, silently doing the job for many years at, uh, to some regard, uh, such as PyPI, RubyGems, and for cloud native you know, OCI registries. And I just want to point out here that we, we actually have a talk this afternoon about how we're doing that, how we're attaching S bombs and salsa attestations to OCI registries. And there's a talk this afternoon by Brendan Mitchell. 
So going on to the next layer now, uh, once we have the metadata aggregated and synthesized, um, we need to be able to make policies on them, right? So on one end of, of, the, of the coin, we have, you know, how do we actually enforce these policies? And I think we are pretty much set on that. We have CNCF projects like Kaiverno open, uh, open Policy Agent that can do that. And if you're in the enterprise, you have your favorite ones um, from your governance risk and control and CMDB systems. However, on the other side lies the question, you know, what does it mean to have a secure software supply chain? You can ask, most people ask, I want to have a policy that says containers running in my cluster must have a secure software supply chain. But what does that actually translate to? Can we break it down to tangible questions that we can tackle? Are we talking about vulnerabilities, build provenance, tooling, developers? How many layers of transitive dependencies do we care about? How do we reason about trust and risk in policy? And these are largely unanswered questions, and tag security is starting an effort to rally the industry on defining what good looks like for software supply chain policy. Um, so this is undergoing as part of the supply chain working group that meets every Thursday. So some kind of questions we'll be exploring in the group is um, various policies. And I think they, they kind of break down into three main categories. We have reactive, preventative, and proactive. So reactive is kind of like the log4j. We talked about the open SSL um, vulnerability this morning. You know, there's a new hot vulnerability that's out. Question one is, am I affected? And then we go ahead to say, how am I affected? Which software is being affected? And then how can I go about to remediate and um, throughout my entire organization? Um, and we have preventive policies um, where I say, you know, I want to be able to check if software hits a compliance requirement before deploying into my cluster. Uh, this consists not only of measures like vulnerability scanning or fuzzing, uh, but we will also want to include organization claims and certification on software. For example, you know, certifying for prod, certifying that certain departments only can run software on certain clusters. And finally, we have uh, what, <clears throat> what we call proactive policies. And um, this is somewhat a little bit more on export, but it's trying to identify, you know, the next log4j before it happens. Um, for those that are familiar with the XKCD comic, basically we're trying to find the underpinning libraries that are critical um, to our open source infrastructure. Um, so there's some prior art here, for example, the OpenSSF criticality scores. Uh, however, as we've seen with uh, the log4j slash log4shell case, is that criticality scores are only one part of the picture and there definitely are more metrics and more analysis and policies that we can make in order to be more proactive in finding these before it happens. So in conclusion, we've made a lot of good progress in the world of producing good software supply chain security. Uh, we need to start making uh, it easier to consume what we've built. Um, tech security has many efforts. I do encourage everyone to drop by um, to, to have a chat with us and get involved. And we also have a couple of talks happening today. Um, besides the one that I mentioned, we also have not all that sign is secure, verify the right way with Tough and Sigstore, and spicing out container image security with Salsa and Guang today. So with that, I hope to be able to come back to the next Cognitive Security Con and see policy and aggregation and synthesis pictures kind of be filled up with many more projects and community efforts. So with that, thank you very much. <laughs>